Hello boys and gals, men and women, and War Thunder players. The past week has been a long one. I have been a gamer since 2014, played on console till 2019 and moved on to PC. Between all these years, games came and went. Some games like Team Fortress 2 stayed the same, like its player base. The game and player base still lives and I play it too. But there is one game that had a special place in my heart and in my soul. War Thunder. The game unlike Team Fortress 2 still gets massive updates and changes. Its player base also changed, like any other game. I played it on the PlayStation 4 early 2014 and was amazed. Back then I didn't understand tanks, mechanics, weapons and how they worked. YouTubers like Flydaily, Baron Von Games, Ash and 2 and 900, God bless his soul, learned me tactics and strategy with planes and tanks. Back then the game was fun to play. The game was new and because it was free to play, Everybody hopped on the train to War Thunder. The community was just amazing at that time. No toxicity, just fun and dogfighting around. The devs back then pushed out massive updates like every week. It was amazing. Like update 1.41 which added 86 new vehicles. Eight of those were premiums and four were bundles. Compare that to the updates we now get. Like last update. Update, Apex Predators, gave us 42 new vehicles, most of them were top tier and 15 of those were premium and bundles. Every update back then was like Christmas morning. It gave us so much content and back then you could research those tanks and planes within months if you played well. There was no stress, the community was relaxed and not sweat lords like in top tier right now, and the economy was fine. I was never out of Silver Lions back then. The only thing I lacked was skills. Yes, from time to time, we get annoyed or angry and rage quit and come back the next day refreshed with more hope and dreams about reaching that plane of tank. But like all nice things, it started to change. I remember around 2016 to 2017 that they shadow nerfed the amount of SL that you could get per match. That was one of the first intentional changes that they made. A small part of the community saw this change happen but it didn't get much attention. Some years later, around 2018 to 2019, we also got a massive nerf to RP gain. That time I felt the change happen, reaching top tier became really hard and time consuming. I back then, bought a top tier bundle to ease my pain and I reached top tier in about 2 months. Every update after that incident, the numbers of top tier vehicles began to increase, both premium and the tech tree ones. The community began to change, the older players left and newer, younger player began to take its place. The final nail in the coffin for me was around 2019 to 2020, the so-called shark attack update, which introduced us to the K-50 Black Shark. A broken premium that changed my view of this game. That machine could spawn at the beginning of the match with Vickers and dominate the allied teams. Back then there wasn't an anti-air system with the range to kill the Black Shark. Maybe the Adats or the Roland could kill it, but since the K-50 was a bundle, players bought it with no thought and either A died when trying to reach the battlefield or B War Thunder veterans absolutely destroyed the tanks on the ground and planes in the air. The Russian player win rates were abysmal. And that remained so till late 2020. After that update I had a break on War Thunder. Now in 2023, I only log and play a few ground battles and leave the game. After I get revenge killed by either a toxic SU-25 or a brain dead P-47. I only come back for the World War II and Cold War vehicles, just to see them in game and leave the top tier vehicles in the dust. Do you guys remember the RU-251 spam and the heavy age? Ah, uh, those times, where T-10Ms and mice were fighting it out, 
no high-explosive anti-tank fin-stabilized rounds and no armor-piercing discard sabo rounds, just armor-piercing high-explosive rounds with dreams trying to hit a weak spot. Those battles lasted for hours, now top tier it's just one shot one kill, unless you're a T-80 or T-72. You could, back then, win battles if you knew how to angle your armor. It was gorgeous. The player with the most knowledge about their tank or plane won most encounters. Also air battles were immersive. If you knew the maneuvers and the limits of your plane, you could save your team on the brink of destruction and be called a hero. Now the pilot who has the best missile will win any encounter. Just like in ground battles, the skill is gone, and so is the fun. Want to know my hours playing this game? Here you go. 2.2 months, and that's only realistic. I am proud to call myself the brother in arms in this game, but I am not so happy in which direction War Thunder is going. It's changing more to a pay to win or pay to progress system which many player including me, despise. The community also has to realize that only one part of Gaijin this did, the top. Luckily we protested and stopped that horrible economy change. Shareholders and maybe the marketing team had some influence on the change, but I am not so sure. Remember that the rest of the employees have nothing to say in this manner. Only the top can make those changes happen. However as time progressed and I got older, I began to realize that back then that was the golden age of War Thunder. It was fun, and I will never ever have that fun again in this game. We, the players, deserve better, and now it's time for Gaijin to hear our voices. Also rest in peace main menu music, I will never forget you. I hope you enjoyed my War Thunder talk and remember on 26th of May, don't play. Join the cause.